What's up traders? I'm going to show you in this video how to set up a Benzinga Pro workspace guide to find volume and price action fast. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up at the end of the video or any time of the video. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my new videos. I'm right now looking at a setup that I've already built, but I'm going to show you how to build this setup in your scanner. So this is using Benzinga Pro's workspace guide. So you go over to a new workspace at the top and you just add this little plus sign here. So to get it to look just like mine on this side, what I'm going to do in this workspace, this new workspace is I'm first going to click on the details page. Uh, this is going to allow me to view the chart and the volume in real time, which is important to me as a day trader. Uh, you may want to focus maybe on volume on a weekly time frame or a monthly time frame, in which case you can still do this by setting it to a different time frame. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to the charts by going over to this tab here and clicking on the chart tab. So now you can see I have a full chart set up. Uh, right now, I believe this is on a, uh, I'm not sure what time frame, but if you go down here at the bottom, just hit one minute. Uh, that's what I'm going to focus on most of the time. So right now it's on Apple and these are one minute candles. So we go ahead and have our details page up. So this is going to help me identify volume and price action coming into a stock. So when I'm day trading, what's in very important is volume for all of the traders that trade with me. They know I'm a strong advocate of no volume, no trade. That's one of my rules. So in this case, I'm going to need to see volume pouring into a stock. So if uh, Joe Schmo comes on the chat and says, guys, uh, this stock is spiking up, take a look at it. Well, I go ahead and pull it up. I take a look at the volume and if it's spiking up on 100 shares, I want nothing to do with that stock until volume shows itself. So we have our details page up now. This is going to be our chart, which is just scrolled over here, hit that chart tab and you can see the chart. Now I'm going to show you also how you can find breaking news at the same time using the same details page, but stick with me to the end. So we have our details page up. I'm going to come over here on the left hand side. And again, just using this as reference, I'm going to need a scanner down here. So the next thing I'll go to is the Benzinga scanner. Once I hit that, it's going to give me a list of names and stocks. But what I want to do is I want to narrow that list down. Uh, for myself, I generally trade stocks that are going to have a low flow. So maybe you're going to manipulate these filters to uh, better suit your style of trading. But for me, I'm going to stick to a low float name. So in that case, I'll show you how to set up that scanner now. So I'm going to go to the all tab here. That's going to open up all of the filters that you can set uh, within Benzing and Pro's filters uh, on their workspace here. I'm going to go to price right here and I'm going to go to custom. So I'm going to make this one dollar two and it messed up there. I'm going to click it again. One dollar to I'm gonna make this to twenty dollars. So it's one dollars to twenty dollars. So those are the that's the price range of stock I'm gonna be generally trading is between one dollars and twenty dollars. I may trade something under one dollar. I may trade something over twenty dollars. But for this particular scan, I'm gonna set it to one to twenty dollars as my price range. So then I'm gonna go down to the share float, which is over here on the right. And I'm gonna click on that and go to custom as well. So in here, I'm gonna change it to 50 million. So if you type in 50 M, then it's gonna uh, register as 50 million share flow or less. And that's in the maximum column there. So once that's, go, that's already set on there, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to uh, the one minute change here. So this is important to me because I want to see stocks that are trending on the uh, one minute time frame, stocks that are moving up in the last minute. So that's why I have this set. I'm going to go ahead and set this to custom and it's just going to be really simple. I want to see a minimum of 0.75. So just under 1% is fine, but I do want to make sure that we are looking at stocks that are trending up, not stocks that are trending down. So I don't want to see anything going down. I want to see them going up. Uh, because I want to see them as fast as possible. So 
That's all I'm going to set here on the scanners. And you can see what happened is I no longer have any results that are populating. And the reason for that is because I'm making this video during the off hours of the market. So if the market was uh, uh, running right now or it was regular hours or pre-market, aftermarket, you would see maybe names populating on this on this list as long as it hit these filters or we're under these parameters. So we're looking for stocks that are under 50 million share float. We're looking for them to be trending in the last one minute up at least 0.75% of a uh, in the last minute. And we're also looking for stocks that are between the, the price range of one and $20. So that's, that's the three filters I have on this. Nothing crazy. Uh, you can see the filters here at the top and then you can click this little tab here to clean it up and that's it. So uh, if you want to change any of these tabs that you have at the top, you can do that. So just go ahead and click on the columns here and you can add the columns or delete columns as you want them. So uh, generally you may want to see here's share flow. Might want to have that on there and you may not really care to see the change. If you know the change percentage, uh, can you can you can see that on the chart, but you can mess around with these columns here and uh, set it up how you like it. Also, the refresh 10 seconds. I like to keep this one on as real time. So you can experiment with different time frames on this one, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, never. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on the real time so I can see things trending right now. So I'm good with that. I now have the details page on the left and now I'm gonna make this signals page or this scanners page now appear under that by clicking on the signal. So if I go over to my workspace over here, as a reference, you can see I have signals on the right side. And in order to get that like that, you just click on the signals on the left right here. So I'm gonna click that and voila, we have these signals now on the right side. So you can see that right now we're just looking at price spikes and I don't really care to see the price spikes because uh, we should generally see that in our change percentage on the one minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that box off and I'm gonna go to highs. So I'm looking for stocks that are making new highs or day high series. So I'm gonna click both day high series and I'm gonna go ahead and click session high. So just by clicking just those two filters, you can see how we've now manipulated that list to show uh, less stocks or a different number of stocks. So uh, if you changed it, maybe you don't wanna see session high, you wanna limit the noise that comes on your scanner or your signals, and maybe you're just looking for stocks that are making day high series. If that's the case, you're gonna see names like TNXP, SIGA, uh, JNJ, KO. So we need to limit this list down just by a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead to the filters here. I'm gonna add filter and I'm gonna go to the share float. And I want to kind of uh, correlate this with the scanner we built on the left-hand side. So we know that we have this to one to $20 as well as 50 million share flow or less. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a filter and it's the share flow. I'm gonna to go to the maximum and hit 50 M and there we go. We have now 50 million share flow is the maximum uh, share flow that we're gonna see on this list. So I'm then gonna add another filter here and it's gonna be for the price. So price to previous flows here. And I'm gonna change this from one to $20. So that again correlates with our scanner on this side. So that allows us to see less stocks on this list and a little bit less noise, which can be very important as a day trader because you don't want to get crazy distracted uh, with all the noise that's going on around you. So uh, this is how you can kind of limit that noise down a little bit and, and see uh, stocks that are, are really important. So those are the only two uh, filters I'm going to set on this here scanner. So I'm going to go back to the signals and what we can do is we can actually add this to day highs, uh, session high as well. So I'm gonna add that on there because we shouldn't see too many names, but we still wanna see those names on there first because in order to hit our day high series, the stock has to hit this high list three times in a row uh, and then it will post a day high series alert. So I wanna see, maybe we start to see volume trickle into it and it's not extremely fast. So I don't wanna miss those moves. So that's why I set on uh, the session high as well. So I have the session high and the day high series both set so I don't miss anything. Um, that's basically it. And what's really great about this, what I love about this is the scanner shouldn't generally populate too many results. So what I found you can do is you can actually shrink this screen down a little bit. And that way you only have the top maybe 
three results that you're really paying attention to because I don't, I'm not really looking to trade five, 10, 15 stocks. I'm trying to focus on what's hot right now, especially being a day trader. So what's again cool about this, what I love about this is on this right hand side and on this left hand side, any name that populates in these results, you can then click on that name and on this left hand side in the chart, you're going to then see that chart pulled up. So whatever time frame you have set, which I have the one minute time frame set here, then whatever I click on is going to uh, pull that chart up on that left side. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'm going to click on SIGA, which was a very popular stock this past week. Uh, and you can see how it pulls up the chart here. What's great about this is you can see uh, what I have here is the actual volume up in the left hand side. So any name that I click on on this list and or this list, you're going to then see the volume in that corner. And whenever my cursor is not on the screen itself or hovering over one of these candles, it's going to then give me the volume for the last candle. So that means the candle that's being posted right now, which is very important again as a day trader because I'm not looking for volume yesterday. I'm not looking for volume uh, last night. What I'm looking for volume or, or what I'm looking for is volume right now. So uh, this one minute volume that we see here in the corner is depicting the one minute volume uh, in this candle posted right here. So if I zoom in here, what we are looking at is this is the candle that's giving me 594,000 shares traded in that one minute candle, which is very important to me because again, as a day trader, no volume, no trade. So we can see in this last candle, there were 625,000 shares. We can see there was uh, 1 million shares traded in this candle. So you can see how that can be a benefit to you as a trader because you can access this information extremely fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Ruby just for an example. And we can see here that this one posted uh, at the top there, 4,000 shares uh, traded, 4.2 thousand shares traded. If I hover over the candle before that, 670 shares traded. The candle before that, 2.48 thousand shares traded. We can see how this uh, stock here is not really tradable. If I'm looking for volume and liquidity to get in and out of my trades, this stock is not one of the stocks that I'm generally looking at to trade because it obviously does not have that volume and we could find that information fast using Benzinga Pro. So what I can also do here is I can find breaking news. So maybe there's a stock that's popping up on our scanners or maybe you see in the chats that someone's saying, oh, this, you know, so-and-so stock is going through the roof. SIGA is going through the roof. It's it's moving now. It's, it's uh, you know, gapping up. Uh, we need to hurry up and make a game plan on this. Well, I can show you how to find that news just as fast as you just found that volume. So this same tab that we have here as chart, you can also click this one over here on the news feed. So if you click that there, you'll then get a list of all of the news posted on that uh, particular stock that past day, the day before that, the past week. You can just scroll down and go through all of the news that was posted in the past week or two. Uh, or however long you're looking back. But what's important usually is, is the news that's posted that day. But you can see how if I click on any one of these names, it's going to then pull up the news on the left side. So what's great about this is we can now uh, depict, is there news? Yes, there's news. Okay, switch over to the chart. Do we have volume? Yes, we have volume. Okay, then we have it making new signals, which means it's making new highs on this chart. So a lot of traders are going to be watching that, uh, especially breakout traders. And then we can also see that it's gapping up on a percentage. Uh, so it's hitting a lot of gap scanners. So maybe you don't have these signals, you don't have these uh, high of day alerts, but maybe someone has a gap scanner, just a simple gap scanner is now picking up that same stock. So you can see the name is on this list as well as this list. Uh, will then maybe have value on your chart. So uh, again, using SIGA or SIGA as an example, you can then also zoom in just by using your mouse to scroll in with the roller. And you can just come in here and mark levels by hitting Alt H. And if you hit Alt H, you're gonna then be marking a horizontal line. So what's great about this is you can now be marking support resistance on the fly. And this gives you a great idea to then uh, maybe develop a trade plan if you like to use support resistance in your trading. So, uh, and there's plenty of other tools that 
Benzinga and TradingView has to offer. So you can go in here and you can look at Alt C will give you a cross line, uh, Alt V will give you a vertical line and so on and so forth. So you can see how you can mark levels of resistance or uh, support and go about your trading from there. So I'm gonna remove, and that's pretty much it guys. So the whole workspace guide really consists of, we have again, the overview here, or we have the details page is gonna be the first tab that we click on to open up this details page. We're then gonna scroll over on these tabs over to the chart. And that's mainly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the volume into these uh, names. Now, when it comes to uh, different times of the morning, if it's pre-market, maybe I'll have the news feed up to really uh, be focused on that. But again, no matter whether there's news, breaking news or not, whether I like the news or not, it's not really about that. It's more important what the, uh, the market depicts about that news or what the market thinks about that news. Uh, so if the market likes that news, you're gonna see that in the volume. So we're gonna then see that on the chart in the volume uh, and we're gonna see, okay, it's gapping up, it's making price change, it's making uh, new highs, and it's doing it on volume. So that's what's important as a day trader. So again, we have our few filters over here. We have uh, a couple filters down here, nothing crazy, really simple workspace using Benzinga Pro's workspace guide. Uh, if you guys like this video and you wanna see more like this, hit the thumbs up and leave me a comment down below with maybe a video that you'd like to see. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.